about the significance of Iran hosting this NAM meeting at this very important juncture in global politics. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, the 16th non-aligned movement summit is being held at a critical juncture in the history of international relations. The summit is being held in Tehran and uh, at a time when Western countries are facing major financial and social crises. And this indicates that the sort of global management is suffering from weaknesses and deficiencies and there's a need for new innovations and initiatives in order to improve the situation in the, in the, in the international domain. In the meantime, the wave of Islamic awakening sweeping the Middle East and North Africa has led to major developments. Countries that countries where people have a great a role for determining their destiny. They uh, are in fact seeking to cut their dependence on the major powers. And all these conditions indicate that the non ally movement with 120 member states and 17 uh, country observer countries and organizations is the second major world body next to the United Nations. And this organization can have uh, uh, an effective and crucial role to play. And at this critical juncture, we see that uh, the delegations uh, that uh, have welcomed their participation in the, the Tehran summit, they have wi uh, widely welcomed the, their participation in this summit. And this indicates the uh, importance uh, with respect to the timing of this summit. And hopefully with the participation of senior officials from these countries, we'll hopefully we'll be able to discuss the uh, lofty goals of the movement and also the topics that have been on the agenda and the circumstances uh, further necessitates uh, their influence on the international arena. I think that one of the issues that uh, is commonly on the agenda that is the topic of the meeting that is sustainable peace under uh, a common universal management. This means that all the independent countries and member states of the non ally movement are after the establishment of peace and security throughout the globe, a, uh, a type of peace that has to be a sustainable one. And also the factors that can guarantee such a peace, such factors must be available. Uh, now, one of the main reasons for insecurity in many world countries is uh, the, the, the in acts of intervention by major powers, their expansionist policies, and the fact that they violate the territorial integrity of other countries and they uh, threaten other countries uh, in order to attain their interests, they resort to military tools and they also unilaterally seek to impose uh, certain laws. And these are the variety of topics that has caused concerns among the member states. At the same time, the existing crises indicate that these few specific countries are not able to run the affairs of the world and also they are not able to run the organizations the international organizations. Therefore, if independent countries uh, contribute to the, this universal management and play their roles, we will attain development and sustainable peace more swiftly. And we hope that this meeting in Tehran would prove to be successful for attaining this goal with respect to the fact that the three-year period of presidency by the Islamic Republic of Iran will begin from Thursday after the transfer of uh, the rotating presidency from Egypt to Iran and uh, the necessary planning have been made for f further uh, measures in order to turn this movement into an influential body in the international arena.
Kenya with the help of all the member states. And we think that this is going to be a turning point in the history of the non ally movement. I'm very glad you mentioned the, the presidency of Iran now from Thursday, as you mentioned, of the NAM movement. Um, can you tell us a bit about if Iran will be restructuring anything within the NAM to make it a more effective body to fight many of these issues that the, that the world is facing? Well, one of the uh, main reasons that the movement uh, since its formation uh, has been de defined as a movement, the countries uh, as the independent countries that they did not want to align with the Western or Eastern blocs, they wanted to in fact uh, create a new movement and in order to avoid turning into a bloc, they did not go after the mechanism of an organization. They tried to uh, make this uh, body a more flexible body in order to be able to present its views on a variety of issues. Therefore, uh, the structures uh, that are normally defined uh, for the bodies and organizations uh, does not exist within the, the non ally movement. But we think that the developments are going in a direction that uh, necessitates uh, that uh, necessitates certain changes so that we'll be able to make more effective and more useful use of the existing capacities. The 120 member states uh, form a capable uh, body and it, 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 they in fact uh, comprise 55% of the world population and 20% of the economic and financial circulation of the world and they can have an effective role in international arena. Therefore, the innovations, the initiatives and plans can be raised, but these plans and initiatives have to be endorsed by all the member states. We think that as far as the statute of uh, uh, the body, the movement is concerned, we can uh, work out new plans. And as far as uh, the economic structure is concerned, and also making the bilateral and multilateral economic cooperation a targeted one, we can pr present new uh, initiatives and innovations. And if uh, there are defined cooperation among these countries, th this can boost their abilities uh, for countering unilateral decisions by other powers. There are many initiatives on the agenda and gradually we will, hopefully we'll be able to gradually move on with these initi initiatives and suggestions so that uh, we'll be able to make use of independent countries in order to reach a point, in order to have a better world uh, with uh, uh, enhancement of peace and security and the countries be able to attain their rights and defend their rights and defend their territorial integrities and in this way reduce the gap between the developing and developed countries. I also want to talk about specific issues, if, if I may. Um, the issue of Syria, of course, is very important. Uh, we've heard uh, talk and reports that Iran will be hosting a number of meetings with specific countries about Syria. What more can you tell us about that? Speaking of peace and security in the regional countries, uh, it's related to peace and security throughout the region. But this is particularly true about a country like Syria that is a strategic situation. It's in the neighborhood of the Zionist regime, and the Zionist regime is the source of all regional and international threats. Uh, in line with the issue of Islamic awakening, uh, the, the, since uh, these uh, pro-Zionist Americans did not manage to block this wave of Islamic awakening and uh, it feels that it has been harmed by uh, the independence-seeking waves in this region and also it's going to lose the, the supporters of the Zionist regime. They started in acts of uh, causing seditions and on, be on pretext of defending uh, public demands, they, paved the, they tried to pave the way for military intervention or they were after fomenting tensions inside these countries. The issue of Syria is 
به نمایش گذاشته میشه What you see in Syria actually is beyond مخالفین the ongoing developments, uh, the demands of the opposition, or you know, speaking of a serious, serious uh, uh, issue, it's something beyond these domestic issues. We believe that the interventions uh, are not aimed at resolving the crisis in Syria, the issue in Syria, and the problem in Syria, and they may even be, may not be pleased with the, the, any sort of dialogue between the opposition or the government. So you see, when Mr. Kufi and Nan is Uh, designated as a special envoy and he presents a six-point peace plan and there are some countries uh, have fully supported the plan and we believe that this is go a good framework for uh, in fact uh, directing the situation in, the, in an appropriate way in any case of uh, attaining success we witnessed the uh, measures by foreign countries uh, aimed at fomenting tension and fomenting violence and sending more arms into Syria in order to hamper the formation of a calm atmosphere and hamper any peaceful condition from taking shape. Therefore, the Islamic Republic of Iran is of the view that with the help of countries that have uh, closer political views, it's feasible to pursue a plan so, so as to resolve the problem inside Syria as soon as possible with the help of the Syrian officials and also the, the conflict parties. We held a meeting in Tehran. It was the Syrian Friends meeting in Tehran and uh, there were several countries and an international organ participating and many issues were raised. One of the proposals by the Islamic Republic of Iran was the formation of a contact group so that the effective countries along with countries that believe in the peaceful resolution of the Syrian issue, they would just uh, cooperate with each other. And also, in the course of the OIC the summit in Mecca, uh, Mr. Morsi also presented a proposal so that four powerful countries of the region, including Iran, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey, would cooperate and hold consultations in order to look into regional crises such as the Syrian crisis. Also, there was a proposal that was immediately welcomed that was two phone conversations between the Egyptian foreign minister with the Iranian foreign minister, and this is indicative of preparedness by both parties in order to seriously follow up this issue in order to improve the situation in Syria. The NAM meeting is an opportunity from, and it can be uh, analyzed from two perspectives. One aspect is that uh, speaking of the meeting's document, uh, reference has been made to regional crises. There are three different chapters and the issues are addressed. One is global and international issues that are related to the ideals pursued by the NAM and also the regional crises. Uh, is addressed by the second chapter issues such as Iraq, Afghanistan, Palestine, Syria, Sudan, Somalia, in Africa, Latin America, and so on. And in the third chapter, reference has been made to topics of development and human rights, uh, combating uh, illicit drugs and combating human smuggling, and also subjects related to food security, health, energy security, access to information technology and so on. So these are developmental topics. So within the framework of this document of the meeting, we also have issues related to regional countries such as the Syrian issue and in yesterday's expert level meeting, within the framework of the political committee, different issues were raised and also the, the, the Syrian issue was addressed at the committee. There were minor differences of views amongst uh, some uh, NAM member states, 
and with the management of the Islamic Republic of Iran and by bringing the views closer together and understand and an agreement was reached and this agreement that has been reached among at the expert level meeting in yesterday's session indicates uh, that uh, there is a suitable atmosphere for adopting effective decisions and in this way we can make use of this capacity for resolving the crises and of course this has to be confirmed uh, at uh, this afternoon's meeting and this afternoon we have the expert level meeting we have the closing ceremony of the expert level meeting and the secretary general will uh, in fact present the views of the committees uh, and in case uh, there's no any particular consideration it will be finalized and endorsed and tomorrow at the foreign ministerial meeting of NAM member states is going to be put forth so this is a natural process and the Syrian issue is addressed as well but on the sidelines uh, of uh, this meeting there is a valuable opportunity there are senior officials of countries that have close views and they are concerned about the Syrian issue and they are seeking a solution and we make use of this opportunity on the sidelines of the meeting and in all and uh, a comprehensive plan has to be raised and the views of all the conflicting parties uh, uh, will be included in this plan and also the views of the government, the Syrian government and the opposition groups uh, and the government is of course ready to take more steps in line with reforms provided that the situation is calmed down and hopefully we'll be able to make use of this opportunity for resolving the Syrian issue. Another issue Mr. Mehman Pras was uh, Mr. Saleh he brought up the issue, the Iranian foreign minister brought up the issue in his opening statement about the United Nations and reforms that are needed in the United Nations itself. Um, can you tell us about what Iran is thinking as far as that goes, as far as the UN Security Council maybe goes, etc. One of the, the topics that is being raised amongst NAM member states is the changes that are necessary uh, that the UN, the Security Council, and uh, also uh, other UN affiliated bodies. Speaking of the general conditions prevailing in the international arena, it's a special uh, condition. We can compare it to the situation prevailing in, after World War II two, there were new powers taking shape and some powers were facing a declining trend and there were new currents emerging in the international arena. So the situation uh, is becoming similar to the post to the post World War II era and uh, there's a need for uh, reconsideration. So if this uh, structure was effective, there was, uh, we wouldn't face so many crises today. We see that uh, there was a good definition presented at the outset, but in practice, there were political pressures by certain powers, and you see that uh, many uh, issues of interest uh, are being misused. So there is the motive among member states of the non-aligned movement to have reforms for a better performance of the UN, the Security Council, and also UN affiliated bodies and organs. We, during our presidency over NAM, we, through collaboration with member states, we seek to present initiatives and plans so that uh, the non aligned movement, as an integrated body with uh, a unified approach, would present its views for the necessary reforms at the UN and international relations. And hopefully, we'll be able to attain uh, the objective. Uh, set by NAM and also the sublime goals that most countries believe in. All right, we will have to leave it there for now, but we do appreciate you taking your time out to speak to us here on Press TV. That was, of course, Mr. Ramin Mahman Press, the Foreign Ministry spokesman, speaking to us here live in Tehran in our studios. So we're going to move on with the news.